seconds to uh, make an opening statement based on this question. Uh, what should voters make of the fact that you're here tonight, but your opponent is not? Well, good evening. Uh, welcome, Trace, to House District 32, uh, the heart you. of Lincoln County here in Chandler. Also want to thank the Lincoln County GOP and also the American Legion for hosting the venue. Um, I was really going to talk about, you know, me being the hometown guy. But, you can um, talk about whatever you want, but I, that question is pending. I am born and raised here in Lincoln County um, in House District 32. Been here for 55 years. Um, was elected 10 years ago. Um, would be honored to be reelected for my last term. There's a lot of great work we've done over the last 10 years. Uh, more things to come. Some items were talked about here briefly with the sheriff's debate. A lot of things coming here to this district. Economic development growth, um, things that still need to be finished up uh, with the senior leadership that I do have at the Capitol. Um, I'm the last person that was in the budget rooms back in the 56 whenever we actually had to come up with a revenue plan to balance the budget, to give the teachers pay raise. So I will just say that I'm here, I'm always available for my constituents. I won't speak on behalf of my opponent. That'll, that's an answer. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to ask you some questions about the HD32 race and your candidacy. Uh, you're a 10-year incumbent, like you said, seeking a final term. You're the chairman of the House Appropriations and Budget Committee, and that's a powerful position. And with all the turnover in the legislature, I think it's probably safe to say that, that you know more about the state budget than you know other any other elected official up there. That said, I'm not sure most voters care that you can recite agency appropriation figures and off the top apportion and explanations. Uh, so with that in mind, explain some sort of funding mechanism, uh, schools, sheriffs, roads, healthcare, explain something that, and why people should care about that. Because I'm not sure that, that your average vote, I don't know that my neighbors care that we take X percent off the top to fund X, Y, Z. Does that make sense? Well, everyone should care about the budget. Number one, it's taxpayers' money. In Oklahoma, we do have to have a balanced budget every year. The item that you're talking about, apportionments off the top, are things that roll in, tax dollars that come in, they are over the years, which were priorities from previous legislatures, uh, sent to different areas. A lot of them go to roads and bridges. A lot of them go to education. Others go to teacher retirement. Those funds never go to the general revenue fund. General revenue fund is what the legislature actually appropriates from. So not just for House District 32, but every House district sends their representative to the Capitol. We only get to appropriate and have control over a percentage of the budget, not the full state budget. The apportionments off the top are already dedicated and allocated and they're sent in motion as the money comes into the coffers at the state, they never make it to general revenue. General revenue is the largest revenue source that we have for general appropriations. So to understand that and know where the funding comes and goes is very important. A couple of things that have happened, once for county roads and bridges, there are apportionments. We just ran a bill this past year, Senator Hall and I did, raising a cap on apportionment for county roads and bridges. It was capped in 2015 during the 2000 uh, or time of the economic downturn for the state. It was capped. We have now removed the cap. It's going to be reset for 25, whatever that new number is. That'll be the new number, and those apportionments going off the top will go to the county roads and bridges. Thank you very much. Uh, while you know what, how the capital works, you can have that water bottle there if you need it. Um, it's clear you know how the capital works, but I think it's also clear that some people view you as an entrenched incumbent who gets lobbied by special interests and has to go raise money to campaign. And, uh, you know, even uh, I think uh, it's been reported you rented a, an apartment in Oklahoma City from somebody who works at the Capitol and uh, represents uh, og and &E, I think it is. So how do you respond to people who think you have a corner office in the proverbial swamp uh, at 23rd and Lincoln? You touched on a lot of points there. So let me just start by saying, I am truly honored that there are a lot of people and organizations that invest in my campaign from all different walks of life. Um, we don't always agree, definitely not on every issue, but those people invest in my campaign because they know that I'm a hard worker, an honest broker. I'm gonna show up every day to represent my district and the state of Oklahoma 
and vote what I believe is the right thing for the state of Oklahoma, period. The other thing about having an apartment, uh, there was an article that came out sometime in the media, and I've always said they're never our friend, no offense, Trace, but. I've heard worse <laughs> said about me. The uh, apartment that I rent is from a gentleman that used to be a state representative. He was then the state treasurer, and now he actually works for og and &E at Government Relations. I've known the gentleman for many, many years. Thank you very much. Um, during this year's public budget presentations, uh, efforts that you care about received some criticism, often from the Senate side of the building. Uh, first, Senate President Pro Tempore suggested that you have, quote, pet projects, such as the new housing stability program you authored in 2023, which provides development funding for affordable single family and, and multifamily housing. And then they also criticized the judicial uh, evaluation program that you've pushed for a couple of years to no avail, uh, largely because the Senate has not supported it. And then lastly, uh, you clashed with Senate leaders on the new Department of Public Safety Training Center, which was is slated for development here in Lincoln County. And that was called a bad decision by Senate floor leader Greg McCourtney. Of course, he was ousted a few weeks later by Ada area voters, so maybe the joke's on him still. What should people make of all this criticism that you get from the Senate? <laughs> the Senate does love to hate on me. I, I will say this, though, during budget negotiations, um, I show up, I am a member of the House, but I am the House District 32 representative every day. It is true that I've been the appropriations chair longer than any other appropriations chair in state history, even before term limits, even when the Democrats were in control. So I have a ton of institutional knowledge. I think a lot of that goes back that they feel like somehow they lose in the budget negotiations. I still don't understand this because here's what I will tell you. House District 32 has a senator that represents them as well. Senator Greg Green, that's Senate District 28, overlaps all of Lincoln County. Back to those budget negotiations, the Tactical Center for DPS, we actually funded phase one last year in the budget, $59 million. Phase two this year in the budget became a big negotiation chip for the Senate. Senator McCourtney wanted to talk about pulling back phase one funding, literally defunding the police. That is a position I would never be in, never agree to, always black, back the black, the, always back the blue, period. So that's the way that ended up, and yes, it was a bad decision for him. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think I've got probably one other pretty blunt question for you, and it's gonna be at the local level. Uh, some voters are unhappy because you've acknowledged that I think you've said twice you've applied uh, biosolids, which is treated sewage sludge on your property as a type of fertilizer. And additionally, some people are unhappy with the Cedar Run and Sandstone Hills wind power projects that have been proposed for Lincoln County. Do you, in continue, do you intend to continue using that type of fertilizer? And then do you support those two wind farm projects? That's actually two questions. That's, well, that's what I, I, I that you know, like there was the a comma. That works out better in the floor, but yes. Well, so, <laughs> is he? You're, if you're accusing the media of uh, fudging the question, I'll I'll take I'll take the feedback. So, uh, to answer your two questions, um, biosolids is a, approved and regulated in 41 states in the U.S. It is true. I've used it twice on my phone. I quit using it because my neighbors concern, complained and had concerns about the smell. I truly believe in being a good neighbor, so I didn't use it. I am thankful that it's heavily regulated, and I mean heavily regulated by DEQ, and also by the US Department of um, EPA. But the bottom line, and I want everybody to think about this, if you don't use it as a land application, the only other place you can put it is in a landfill. When you fill up the landfill in South, East Oklahoma County down there. They're going to have to find another landfill. And I do not want one more landfill. We only have one right now in House District 32. I do not want another landfill in House District 32, but that's what the reality will be. They will be looking for another landfill. 
there is technology coming along. If, if we could actually get rid of the smell, we wouldn't be having this problem. And so I am definitely gonna advocate for DQ and the company to work on trying to figure out a way to eliminate this odor. And then at that point, I think that we can move on down the road and still do what's right and still regulate it like they do and move forward. So that was question one. Well, what said. Question, there you go. Two. question two is about the wind farms. Wind farms. So for the record, and I've said this on social media, you were watching social media, I'm surprised you haven't got this answer yet, but I've said it before, so I feel like I need to say it again. This is what the video says. I do not support wind turbines. Senator Green and myself have agreed to run res red legislation for setbacks from wind turbines from homes and non-participating landowners. There is a private property landowner's right. If you don't want them, don't sign them. When you deal with private property, I don't want, especially the government, telling me, can I raise cattle on my property? How many cows per acre can you run on your property? Am I allowed to shoot my guns on my property? Or no, you can only shoot this caliber and lower on your property. Am I allowed to sign an oil and gas lease? Am I allowed to sign a wind turbine lease? I believe once we get back in session that we will be able to have legislation. I believe, believe we'll get something passed. Currently what we have in the setback right now is 1,320 foot, which is a quarter mile. That is both from homes and non-participating landowners. There will be some fights. I'm not sure exactly where we're gonna end up, but I'm gonna carry that legislation and it will take a strong member to get that legislation passed. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I asked you this question a little bit earlier and then uh, you didn't really want to answer it, so I'm gonna ask it again. Uh, you've been running a campaign ad that offers mild criticism of Mr. Shaw, including that he's from Oklahoma City. I don't know much about him myself and his campaign manager uh, didn't seem inclined to me be able to do an interview with him. Um, so let's cut to the chase. What is what does that campaign commercial really mean? What is your actual criticism and your concern? I will just say this. I was born and raised in Lincoln County, House District 32. I got involved in legislation because as a business owner, an industry was being overregulated that I was involved in. And many people come to me and ask me to run for office. I waited for a time when there was a vacated seat, a term limited individual was turned out. I talked to the people that served before me and very passionate about where I live. Public schools, very important to me. Both my daughters graduated from Wellston. I graduated from Wellston. My mother graduated from Wellston. So did my grandfather. I have a feeling that I've never spoken to my opponent before, not a phone call, not an email. Literally moves from Oklahoma City to a rural district. When I first got elected, I believed that the biggest fights would be R versus D. That's not true. It is urban versus rural. I believe somebody wants to buy a rural seat that's actually an urban individual. I can't speak for him and I won't, but it's very straightforward on how much money has been spent. Somebody of their own money that has never had a conversation with me, if you had the best intentions or interests of the House District 32, I can't believe you wouldn't talk to the member that has one term left to talk about what is best for this district. I know I'm the best candidate and the best member for House District 32. Thank you very much. I'll give you your time for your closing statement and I'll tee it up with this question. If you're reelected to a final term August 27th, what will be your top priorities for Lincoln County? When I'm reelected August 27th, I already mentioned I've got the legislation filed. I will tell you that what I believe that is, is a major factors that we need to focus on here in the state of Oklahoma and for House District 32, and it's all kind of tied together, together, but infrastructure and workforce development. Lincoln County is growing. There's a lot of businesses that want to come here, but we have to get the infrastructure in place. We have to educate our workforce and our children, make sure that they can take on the roles and jobs of today and the future. So as we move forward on this plan, I will continue to always listen to my constituents, treat them with the respect and kindness that they treat me with as well. 
But there's a lot of legislation. There's a lot of things in place. We do, we're not able to fund PREP, and you're very well in that program for the last two years, and that is Rural Economic Development Funds. I'm going to be heavily working on that again this year. Judicial reform, I worked on that for three years. I'll, I'll file that bill again. I have, I don't know, probably 10 bills I'm gonna file that definitely have meaning for the citizens of the state of Oklahoma and definitely my house district. Thank you very much. Anything else you wanna say in closing? I'd humbly ask for your vote on August 27th. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. That concludes tonight's conversation here at the American Legion Hall in Chandler. Thank you so much. Thank you to the Lincoln County Republican Party for agreeing to have me ask these questions. I tried to ask fair and firm questions of everybody. Appreciate it. Love to talk to you afterwards. Thank you.